what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and we will continue with the discussion on the first chapter of the gita we had discussed about the first 11 verses in the earlier videos if you have not watched them please go and watch and now we will continue with the 12th verse and in the 12th verse we will see what Fishma does now if you are new to the channel then subscribe to it again and if you like this video then click the like button and share it with your family and friends or somebody who is interested to know about Gita. And before beginning, let us start with the prayer. Omagyan timirandhasya gyanan jana shalakaya chakshurun melitam yena dasmai shri guru venamaha. Alright, I will read the shloka now. Shloka number 12, chapter number 1, book name Bhagavad Gita. Tasya sanjayan harsham kuru vridha pitamaha. Simhanadam Vinadyochya Shankham Dadmo Pratapavan. The translation is Then Bhishma, the great valiant grandsire of the Kuru dynasty, the grandfather of the fighters, blew his conscience very loudly, making a sound like a roar of a lion, giving Duryodhana joy. These specific words here used are Simhanadam. Simhanadam means nad means sound and simha is the lion, like the Leo. <laughs> Pratapava. See, beautiful words are used here. The valiant. So now the purport is the grandsire of the Kuru dynasty could understand that the inner meaning inner meaning of the heart of his grandson Duryodhana. And out of his natural compassion for him, he tried to cheer him by blowing his conchal very loudly, befitting his position as a lion. The grandsire of the Kuru dynasty could understand the inner meaning of the heart of his grandson Duryodhana. Means, what did he understand? He understood what Duryodhana was trying to do. Duryodhana was trying to cheer up the other people so that they will give their contribution in protecting Vishma. That is what was his inner desire. And he wanted to make sure that everybody feels that their position has been acknowledged. Nobody feels that they have been left out. That is what Duryodhana was doing. So Vishma understands this. And out of his natural compassion for him, he tried to cheer him by blowing his conscience very loudly, befitting his position as a lion. Why is he mentioned as a lion here? Because when the lion roars, nobody can stay there. Everybody just flees away. So Bhishma is like that. When he picks up the bow, nobody can stand him. Even the demigods like Indra, even they cannot fight with him. What to speak of other people on Kurukshetra. So now what is happening is, indirectly, it's written in the purport. Indirectly, the symbolism of the conscience, by the symbolism of the conscience, he informed his Depressed grandson Duryodhana. <laughs> that he had no chance of victory in the battle. Because the Supreme Lord Krishna was on the other side. But still, it was his duty to conduct the fight. And no pains would be spared in that connection. So, see how beautifully it's written here in the purport. Basically, what Bhishma is trying to do is, by blowing the conch, he is trying to signal him that my dear sir, my dear Duryodhana, my dear grandson, nothing is going to work. All your political techniques, skills and strategies is going to fail. You will, you will die miserably. Why? What's the reason? Because you are weak? No. Your strength is much more. But the reason is Duryodhana had no chance for victory in the battle because the Supreme Lord Krishna was on the other side. This is the most important reason. Whoever is there on your side, it doesn't matter. Whoever is not there in your side also doesn't matter. The only thing matters is God, that is God there in your side. If he's there, you're victorious. If he's not there, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what Bhishma is telling him, right? But still, it, it was his duty to conduct the fight because he was in charge as the commander-in-chief. And no pains would be spared in that connection. Means he will fight diligently. But indirectly signal Duryodhana that there is no use of your techniques. So now it may apparently seem that Bhishma is a bit unruly, he is a bit rude, he is a bit insensitive. That Duryodhana is talking something with Dronachari. But he is cutting Duryodhana's words in between. Because earlier this 
Duryodhana was talking to Dronacharya and to other people that the army has these strengths, we have these strengths, Bhishma is powerful, you have to protect them from your strategic positions. It might seem like that, but Vishwa knows the inner heart of Duryodhana. Duryodhana himself is not interested in all this political, uh, this demeaning of the other people, but Duryodhana is doing as a mere duty and internally he wants that the war should begin, the war should start and Bhishma slays everybody. So that is why Bhishma knows that let me just do what he wants. And now we will see the 13th verse. Tatha shankascha bheriascha panavanak vomuka sahasai bhayanta sah sabdhas tumulo bhavat. The translation is as after that the conscience, drums, buggles, trumpets, and horns were all suddenly sounded and the combined sound was tumultuous. See this word tumultuous comes from the word tumulo. <laughs> from Sanskrit it has come tumultuous. And then in the 14th verse it goes as follows. Tata svetai hayer yukte mahati shyadanye sthito Madhava Pandavas Chaiva Divyo Shankho Padamodatao. What it means is now these are the sounds which were blowing on the side of the Kurus. Now it goes to the side of the Pandavas. What is happening there? In the side of the Pandavas, what is happening? On the other side, both Lord Krishna and Arjuna stationed on a great chariot drawn by white horses sounded their transcendental conscience. Not materialistic conscience, transcendental conscience. In con now the purport is as follows. In contrast with the conscience blown by Bhishmadev, the conscience in the hands of Krishna and Arjuna are described as transcendental. Transcendental means that which transcends the nature. The nature means the material nature, which means they are spiritual. They are not made of earth, water, fire, air and ether. The five components of matter, of material world. It is spiritual, made of Satchit Ananda. Satchit Ananda means full of eternity, full of knowledge, full of bliss. Satchit Ananda. In contrast with the conscience blown by Bhishma, if the conscience in the hand of Krishna and Arjuna are described as transcendental, that means Krishna and Arjuna's cons conscience are not materialistic. The sounding of transcendental conscience indicated that there was no hope of victory for the other side because Krishna was on the side of the Pandavas. So indirectly it's told here that because the con conscience were transcendental and their conscience were material. So it was already sure that Krishna and Arjuna would, would win the battle. Jayastu Pandava Putrana Yesham Pakshe Janardana Victory is always with the persons like the sons of Pandu because Lord Krishna is associated with them. Should I repeat? <laughs> Victory is always with persons like the sons of Pandu because Lord Krishna is associated with them. There you go. Secret of victory. And whenever and wherever the Lord is present, the Goddess of Fortune is also there because the Goddess of Fortune never lives alone without her husband. Lakshmi Devi, if you see the photo of Lakshmi and Narayan, Lakshmi Devi is always at the feet of Lord Vishnu, massaging his feet. So, Lakshmi Devi is the goddess who is in charge of wealth, money, prosperity. So, she is always at the feet of Lord Vishnu. That's what is told in this verse. So, it is told here that whenever and wherever the Lord is present, the goddess of fortune is also there because she never lives alone without her husband. So if God is there with you, Lakshmi will also be there. But if you go after Lakshmi, her name is Chanchala. She may not be there. Chanchala means one who keeps going from one place to other. That is why you see people are rich today. They are paupers tomorrow. <laughs> Money never stays in one place. And now, continuing further, therefore, victory and fortune were awaiting Arjuna. <laughs> as indicated by the transcendental sound produced by the Council of Vishnu or Lord Krishna. Besides that, the chariot on which both the friends, who are the friends? 
Krishna and Arjuna were seated had been donated by Agni, the fire god, to Arjuna. And this indicated that this chariot was capable of conquering all sides wherever it was drawn over the three worlds. So Agni was very pleased by Arjuna when Arjuna had given him a lot of <laughs> herbs to eat by burning off the Khanda Prast forest. That story comes in the Mahabharata. So Agni, Agni Dev, the fire god, being very pleased, gave him the chariot which had divine powers and wherever it was drawn to the three worlds it was victorious that's what is written this chariot was capable of conquering all directions phenomenally powerful all right that is it from my side we will discuss about the future verses later about who plays which conscious what are the names of the different conscious and what happens when the Kurus hear the sound of the conscience which are blown by the Pandavas. Until next time, if you are new to the channel, subscribe to it, share this video with others and click the thumbs up if you like this video. Okay. Until next time, bye bye, see you.